Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today is a good day. We are learning about the exponential search. Now, we talked about a lot of search algorithms in the couple of videos which we did, uh, but right now I want to talk about the exponential search, and uh, it's a very simple concept, uh, but yeah, it, it does get the job done in a variety of degrees. Now, we all know about binary search and how effective it is. Now, just imagine that you have the binary search, but you also have some new information. You have information about the exact range in which your element is present. Let's say you have an array that is this big, right? This entire array. But while doing binary search, you actually have to do binary search on the entire array, right? And, and in some cases, you're like, the array is too damn big and you don't want to do it on the entire array. So what you can do is you can use something like the exponential search, which gathers a range of elements where the element is present 100%. So you get that range and you only like, suppose you get this much range and, and you only do the binary search on that particular range. Now, when you think about it, when you think about it, it just makes the, the search complexity a lot more effective and, and, you know, much more faster if it has a range because there are mathematically less elements to compute on. And that's how the exponential search basically gets better complexity. Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's a big leap, but it is much faster than the binary search would be without it. Um, and and that, that of course varies between the sizes of the elements. Of course, if you have a small array, uh, it, it, the, the, the difference won't be that big, but if you have a gigantic, massive array, of course, you, you're going to have, um, you know, varying results. So let, let's just uh, talk about uh, this a little bit, uh, what I have put on the screen. You have an array. Uh, I'm just going to eliminate this. You don't need this. You have an array which has these many elements. There are 15 elements in here. Um, you have a, a left and a right. Left obviously points to the first element and right points to the last element. And uh, actually, it doesn't point to the last element. It points one more than the last element because it's kind of the equivalent of length. Um, then you have the key, which I have uh, right now placed uh, minus one, but I'm going to put it as uh, something that is ex existing inside the array. I'm going to say 13. Uh, so 13 is basically what you want to find the position of in this array. And you have um, x. So int x is basically going to be what's going to be, you know, storing the results which you get from the function which you're calling. Here we're calling the exponential search function which we are, we are going to write in a, in a few moments. But yeah, that's, that's basically the setup. If it returns minus one, if, the, if this function returns a minus one, it means that it couldn't find the uh, array or find the element in the array and it just doesn't exist. So it's pretty simple how this works. And, and so let's, let's just get into the, the writing of the program to basically figure out what we have to do. So to tell you the, um, the logic of the program, it's pretty simple. Uh, first thing you start with this, you start with the leftmost element and you basically check the leftmost element with the, the key itself. So now you check basically if the element is greater than or less than the key. Here, if you have zero and you have 13, you obviously figure out that zero is less than 13. Now, when zero is less than 13, you know that the element cannot be, the element 13 cannot be in, in zero, that, that range is too small. So you expand the range by two. So you basically check two over here. Now you check if it's in any of these. No, it's not. Then you expand the element by, by multiplying the range by two again. So if the range is one, you multiply by two, and then you get the value of two. If the range is two, you multiply by two again, you get the range is four and eight and, and, and so on and so forth. So range basically exceeds, but the range always starts from zero, at least while you're computing initially, the range always starts from zero. So when your range reaches about 21, that's when you realize that, hey, 13 is in here. And you and, and we'll write the logic for how you figure that out, but just get the gist of it. Now, when you get the range as this much, you also have to calculate where the range starts from. So what you do is you cut the I into half, and that's where your range starts from. So your range will basically start from something like this. So you cut I in half because you know in your in your entire program that unless the range is more uh, is, is about half the elements will not just will just not fit and you can test this out on a piece of paper uh, iterating through and you'll always find that the range has to be cut in half that's all that's all you need to understand so let's, let's write the exponential function you'll get a better understanding of how this works now whenever you write some kind of function like this you always need to have a base case my base case is this if write 
minus left is less than or equal to zero okay if that is less than or equal to zero it means that it means that the array the array is not even um it's not even one character or one element in length so we basically return minus one and and that's pretty much it for for the base case now you want to start with i now i'm going to say int i is equal to one initially because my range is going to be one i'm going to check one initially so i i basically say while okay while i can't just type i is less than right minus left plus one now this uh, right minus left plus one whatever this is uh will give you the length of um the array itself so i should always be less than that length because if i is greater than that it means then it would mean basically that your entire program is is not going to work because i is going to be greater than the length of your array and that is not something you want to happen if that happens it means your program is broken so that's why i'm going to use this case over here to calculate if i is always in rain in that range of the length so it cannot so i cannot ever go beyond the length of the array that's what we are doing over here i'm going to check if l of i is less than the key okay is less than the key now if that is the case i'm going to say i is equal to or you can even do it in a much fancier manner i times two so as i said you increase from one to two to you know so on and so forth now you check if l of i is less than key and when you check that you realize that key is not fitting in that range always re remember i over here is going to be the the rightmost element the rightmost so i is going to be the rightmost that's why you increase i so i will start from being you know l of one so l of i is one so l of one is this it's going to start from here it's going to increment by a by a measure of two times the i so if it, i is one it becomes uh, one times two which is two if i is two it becomes a uh, two times two which is four and so on and so forth until you basically find a key which is uh which is which is less than l of i as you can just see over here if this doesn't work we'll just do else and then we'll break if this if this case isn't followed we just want to break because we know that i has already gone beyond the index of the key and that's pretty much how you find the rightmost length now to find the leftmost length you don't do a lot of a, a whole lot of stuff all you do is you just break i into half and that's your uh, returning value that's the range so we basically write return and we want to apply a binary search on that and oh god what am i doing a return binary search and then in here you pass in the array you pass in the left which is i by two and you pass in the right and you pass in the key and this is what will give you the value so your left will be i by two because because even if you experiment or check the values your i the key will never be you know beyond this or less than this it's always going to be between i by two and i because that's how the you know that's just how it works experimentally and uh, and this is on what you do the binary search and once you do the binary search you are going to be good to go so if i run this you'll basically see that the position of the key is seven because we use the key of 13 so if you check zero one two three four five six and seven and yeah it's it's working so so yeah that's that's how the exponential search works you basically find a range between which your element exists and once you find that range you know it's going to work out and uh yeah that's just how it works uh so thanks for watching guys my throat is pretty messed up please like share and subscribe to the channel if you uh, appreciate the content and um, thanks for watching guys i will see you in the next video